So in yesterday's post-game video about the Montreal Canadiens and the game against Columbus, which we did talk about yesterday, you can go out there and check this video if you haven't seen it already. Seems like a lot of y'all didn't, but because that video focused on a very particular player that gave himself a role on this team, he had scored a bunch of primary assists, he looked pretty solid, today we're talking about this same player once more, and a trade that we now know was actually on the table that might have sent him over to Ottawa. Today we're talking about the Finnish Tank, a guy who I've honestly been a pretty big fan of compared to the majority of other Canadians fans, to be honest, but I might be a little bit biased because of what he did in the playoff run all those years ago. Today we're talking about Yoel Armia and a recent interview that was done on, what was this, the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinaro featuring a little clip with Pierre Maguire of all people. And I wanted to go out there and give a shout out to this because it gives us some insight as to a potential Armia trade that almost went down a little while ago. So before we dive into that, I'll leave a link in the description to the video itself, as well as the article we'll be reading that has the transcribed quotes. Yuel Armia is 31 years old, 6'4", 218, right-handed guy. Honestly, like, it doesn't really click in my head that he's 31. If you had asked me how old Armia was during the playoff run a few years ago, I would have probably already said he was 31 or 32 back then. He's actually kind of younger than I thought, oddly enough. He's making $3.4 million a year to the end of this season, and he is primarily noted in some trade conversations. We've been seeing his name, a few other guys like Anderson, etc. pop up throughout the Canadiens' trade discourse. Whether or not he does get traded sometime in the next few weeks, though, who really knows? I don't really think it's going to happen, but still, we can wait and see. Armia has himself 8 points in 18 games so far this season, which is kind of roughly in line with what he produced last year. He had 25 points in 66 games played, and was over a point per game in his short stint with Laval. Armia, though, was never really a super highly touted top point producer, as evidenced by his career high of 30 points, although he did get that in 58 games played with the Habs in 2019-20. He's always stood out to me for his reach, for his calmness along the boards and his physical tools. When he wants to protect the puck and he doesn't want you to take it from him, hey, he does a pretty good job at making your task a lot more difficult. I like to talk about that playoff run because in the 2021 season, Yoel Armia had 14 points in 41 games played, but in the playoff run heading to the finals, he had 8 points in 21 games played. So he did accelerate that point production and the goal production as well in the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs, not to mention his representation of Team Finland at different World Championship tournaments, etc, etc. He's always been a pretty stable player. But if you go over to the Reason Sick podcast with Tony Marinaro and Pierre Maguire, let's go out there and read the quote from the video clip here. Pierre Maguire says, The Montreal Canadiens have been trying to trade UL Armia for a long time. I can tell you right now, I worked for a team where they offered UL Armia to us, and that was three years ago. And of course, the podcast was just a few days ago, so if we go over to Pierre Maguire and his staff profile on Elite Prospects, we can see that, hey, he was with the Ottawa Senators a mere three years ago, around the time the Canadians went to the Stanley Cup Finals, and Maguire took over that senior advisor role. It's kind of funny because he wasn't on the Ottawa Senators from 1996 all the way to 2021-2022. He was with the Sens in the 90s, but then eventually took himself out of the NHL staff game. He was mostly doing video broadcasting for hockey television. But in his brief stint with the Senators, he did go out there and get this trade idea tossed in there. He told me it was a part of a much bigger trade, Tony Marinaro said. There were several pieces in that trade, and Pierre Maguire said that he wouldn't name the other players, but obviously the deal didn't go through. Yoel Armia, less than three years ago, was offered by Gordon and Hughes to the Ottawa Senators in a multiplayer trade. The Sens said no. Now, I'm kind of thinking about it like this. The Ottawa Senators back in 2021, if they acquired a guy like Joel Armia, that would have been a pretty good pickup, I would say, at that time frame. Mostly because Armia was coming off of that super hot Stanley Cup final run, he was getting some goals, he was getting production, but the year after, this is when the Canadians really started to take a downturn, it's when they finished worse in the standings and they allowed themselves to draft first overall. How crazy is it, just thinking about that, from the Stanley Cup finals to one year, to literally playing bad enough hockey to get first overall draft pick status the year after. 
I mean, Carey Price and Shea Weber were gone, I get that, but still, ridiculous how that goes down. It is also interesting to me, though, how the Ottawa Senators back in this time frame were involved in potentially grabbing on to a guy like Yoel Armia. If you consider the Sens in 2021-2022, they did have themselves an... Okay, I was going to say an okay record. Eh, they were not that great. I mean, they finished highly enough in the draft standings, and they were, at the very least, better than the Canadians that season. But Brady Kachuk did have himself a 67-point year, Tim Stutzla, 58 points, Josh Norris, 55, Drake Batherson, 44. I mean, Yoel Armia would have been a pretty interesting addition to this group of guys. They did have some other players throughout the bottom of the line that were difficult to play against. Nick Paul, Zach Sanford, Austin Watson... Yoel Armia would have fit in really well with that sort of a core there. Now, here's the funny part. I did say the Senators were okay in that season, but they did finish 7th in the Atlantic. However, only two points separated them from the Buffalo Sabres, who finished 5th in the Atlantic. Detroit, Buffalo, and Ottawa were all kind of there. Montreal had 55 points, so they were way out of it. Man, they stunk that year. I'm kind of thinking about it too, like if Yoel Armia was traded... Not to say that he's, like, the most impactful game-breaking guy that exists on the Montreal Canadiens, but, like, if the Habs lost out Armia on top of Weber and Price in that 21-22 season, who knows if instead of having 55 points, they have 53 points, or they have 52 points, or they finish with even fewer points on the year than that. They were so bad, Montreal was. How in the hell were they that bad? Anyways, I got Slavkovsky now, so I guess it's okay. And maybe, I guess you could say, if the Senators wanted to do some sort of a multiplayer trade, they could have added on some extra assets or a forward or something that would have made the Canadians' lives a lot easier. A prospect or two that would have really bolstered up the Canadians' prospect pool. There were bigger emphasis on that sort of process after the Stanley Cup final run. They tried to give one hoorah to Weber and Price, it did not work, and then they had to go into rebuild mode shortly after. Sure, Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, these guys are young, but they were drafted before that Stanley Cup final run. It's just they kind of had to emphasize on that more after. So, if there was some sort of a trade with Yoel Armia that could have included something like a draft pick or two or multiple players that maybe have been young, you could say, I don't think Ottawa would have necessarily traded away some of their top, top prospects. I mean think 2021-ish era, right? Ottawa would have just seen the first few years of Tim Stutzla, and then they would have had themselves some other guys tossed in there. Tyler Boucher was the recent pickup in that season. I think he really doesn't deserve that draft pedigree. Zaka Stapchuk is there. Philip Norberg, eventually, they took him a little bit later. There are a few guys that you could toss into that conversation, but for now, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Pierre Maguire revealing a rejected Canadians and Senators trade that focused around Yoel Armia. Do you think this trade should have gone through, depending on the assets involved? What kind of an asset do you think Armia would have been worth at that time? He's a little bit worse now, I would say, but he did have a two-assist night yesterday, so I don't want to be too harsh on Armia and his capabilities, but back in that time frame, three years ago, when Pierre Maguire was out there, part of me thinks that because Maguire was in that role to potentially advise a team to trade decisions, I kind of would have maybe wanted to see what he would have had in mind there, but anyways, thoughts in the comment section below about Yoel Armia and the almost trade to Ottawa. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99, and bye.